Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year. Welcome to this episode of Focus on Parliament, where we try to understand the intricate business that happens within the walls of Parliament. And today, we just want to begin off the year and, you know, have a moment of hope or a moment of prophesying into the vast future of what the 11th Parliament can and will be about. Today I have two gentlemen to help me have this conversation, but most importantly to also help us, you know, project the future of the 11th Parliament's business. And on my far end, I have Honorable Yadro Komaketch, who is the former MP Gulu City. Welcome to yeah. this show. Yeah, thank you so much and good morning viewers globally yes. and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. And it's good to have you on the show Thank again you. in this new year. Thank, Thank you. And, and next to yeah. me is the General Secretary for the Uganda Parliamentary Press Association, Mr. Apollo Tusime. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to be part of the deliberations and Happy New Year once happy again. Year. It was a nice one. We yeah. entered. <laughs> <laughs> Last year gave us a run. Mm. And... And maybe just to do to do a throwback, and then then we can build on the future, mm. because we can't talk about the future without understanding the past. Mm. What highlights stood out for you in the eleventh, the business of the eleventh parliament last year? Well, I think, I think the, mine was is, was about the budget, because that is that is what makes yes, makes yes, difference. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the the. The budget of last year was was not uh, sensitive to to the emerging challenges mm. that are coming. Mm. Mm. Uh, it was also not sensitive to to the issue regarding recession yeah. in the economy, yeah. because globally we are going to have a third of the world yeah. economies are going mm. to have recession. So the budget did not uh, take on board those uh, you know strategies, whether at the monetary level or at mm. the fiscal level. So, so that is one thing, and and of course, I also saw that the issue of Corona was at the core of everything, and and I think it was a well fought mm. uh, uh, battle, uh, Minister of Health and all stakeholders, the president, and I I think I think that was was quite a very challenging. Yeah. Uh, of course, Ebola at uh, towards the end of it, and we still don't know whether Ebola is, has been exited. True. Uh, we also look at the, the emerging sub uh, uh, sub virus, which is from Omicron, yeah. uh, coming out mm. from China again, mm. and mm. Uh, and China also uh, lifting, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the restriction on travel, and which mm. is a paradox. And mm. so, so the Europe is in disarray, mm. uh, Asia is in disarray. I don't know. Africa has not put a position. On the emerging challenges of the the wave of mm. corona from China, mm. Mm. so so last year I think we hope this year, well, we we, we keep our fingers crossed. I would not we want do. to comment now, but mm. I think we shall share some of the emerging uh, challenges, which is a rollover from 2022. 2022 was not a good year at all, not yeah, a good year. Struggling. And the Chinese are happy that we they are in. The, in the lunar year, they call it the lunar year, which mm, yeah. which we expect to be possibly better here, yeah. for even Ugandans. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, and maybe to pick there from there, General Secretary, uh, when, when Honorable Komukesh was talking, the key thing that I remember as this year began was, you know, the order paper around the budget is set at 49.9 trillion, mm -hmm. almost 50 trillion mm -hmm. for this new financial year that is coming. We still have a double digit inflation going on. And our revenue reserves are not, you know, at a point where we want them. And when you look at the financial, you know, environment within the country, how do we prepare ourselves first, especially also as parliament, you know, passes the budget for this year? How do we prepare ourselves as Ugandans on the outcomes of such a budget? Well, uh, like you said, um, we expect... Um, um, robust interventions um, to, to, to mitigate the the, the, the the challenges that are in the economy. Well, it is time now the uh, parliament is now starting uh, to, to work on the, the, the budget framework paper that was presented, I think, at the beginning of this week. Mm. We can only hope that possibly they will do 
or the best to, to, to introduce robust interventions mm. to, um, to, 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 to counteract the challenges in the economy because the, 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 we have been um, struggling all through the two years of COVID. We, the economy has been staggering. Uh, even all through this year, the last year, 2022, the inflation rates are, are still high, the, the surge in commodity prices, uh, Ugandans have suffered. Mm. We hope for the best, but um, in my opinion, I see the budget that has been drawn as, as, as another um, ambitious, an ambitious uh, budget because we know that we... We, we always and always struggle year in year yeah. out to yeah. fund to, to fund our budget. Yes. But now the budget uh, is, is, is is increasing. But and again, when you look at what is happening in the economy, mm -hmm. it's there's nothing good that is happening in the economy. And there will be supplementary budgets yes. that will come. So you yeah. expect those supplementary budgets and, and and actually loans the, the loan the loans the loan to, to to grow bigger and bigger and bigger in the in, in, in this year. I I don't think there is much that will change, mm. um, 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 but but we can only have hopes that True. that that, that, yeah. that something can happen. Mm. Hope hope, mm. hope is our, our trading mark. But mm. <laughs> 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 yes, um, when we when we talk about the eleventh, well, today they sit for mm. their third sitting of their second session yes. of the 11th parliament. Yeah. And one of the key issues that is on the order paper is essential motion against Honorable Passes Namganza. I almost feel like it's a bad thing that, it, it's almost a bad thing that has refused to go on. But from the other end, looking out, the argument a lot of honorables give is that we need to have order in the house. And if order means censuring an MP for you know abusing you know the house, it's, it's important and it's imperative that it happens. But outside that, there is also pending business that, mm -hmm. that was there. How do we strike a balance in not only having, you know, this seemingly, the seemingly of order and, you know, business happening in the house, rules of procedure being adhered to, but as well as have business happen. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's overshadowing a lot of the other things I mean, it's number one on the order paper today. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I was a little shocked to, to see that. Well, it is uh, the business committee of parliament decides mm. the the priorities of of, of business of the mm. house. Uh, if I were them, I think the most important priority business in the house. Should not be Namuganza's thing. I hear you. Yeah, we are dealing with the with the economy, which is badly off. Mm -hmm. For me, the resolution that the tenth Parliament made on strategy of of reengaging the economy mm -hmm. was ignored by Minister of Finance. Now, now such are the debates I would want to see in the yes. new year, uh, which would be a follow up uh, debate to to climax into the. The budget framework mm -hmm. debate, and then mm -hmm. we get into the real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of issues. We have so many errant people in this country, but I believe the Parliament will still get a very, a very sophisticated way of reviewing the rules of procedure and using it strategically, technically, and effectively. But somehow, if we decide to use some of these rules politically, we, we don't achieve what we want. Okay. Because on the other quarters, you hear voices in the executive. We shall see them. Now, now, now what is that? So that means that it, this may even be deflated. Mm -hmm. is, is it a mock fight where you say, let's try them. Then if, they, if we get facilitated, then we withdraw. So, so I'm yet to see how it ends. Mm -hmm. It is a very interesting drama. Yeah. And that we need to keep our eyes on where is, is this going to end. Mm -hmm. We needed to have forensic audits in some of the issues that Namugans is being accused mm. of. Mm. Uh, the, the Office of the Auditor General as well should, should be involved in these processes. Mm. Because the issue is about Naguru land. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. So to what, ex to, to what extent has this land been eaten? Because in mm. Uganda, I people hear. now eat things. Yes. Yeah? Even money is eaten. 
apart from food. Mm. So, so I would want us to listen today in the order paper. Either it, the debate continues for Namuganza to be censored, or something is going to happen. But as far as we are concerned, as Ugandans, as citizens, the issue at stake for the new year is, one, education for the kids. Yes. You have heard our parents uh, are crying mm. on the issue of fees. Fees, school fees, yes. There should be strategies of managing how we get into FEB to allow all parents to have their kids in school. Mm. So those are the issues that Parliament should be looking at in this opening of the year. Yeah. I would want us to see a debate beginning off in the framework paper, a proper debate, because in Parliament, yes. one of the things that is challenging is time for speaking is now only three minutes. Mm. You cannot speak. You cannot raise fundamental issues. You know? So the budget framework paper of 49.9 million, what is it that it is in for Ugandans? Mm. The fuel prices at international level has come down. Mm -hmm. We should have actually been selling fuel at around 4,000 shillings. But today I saw fuel, petrol has gone to 5,150. 5, yes. yes. And the palm attendant just told me a while ago that by, by 5 March, we shall be below 5,000. Oh, wow. Right? Mm -hmm. But now, what is our take? in the budget that that helps us to to take advantage of the falling fuel mm, prices mm, yeah. and how is it that we put a stronger stake in the means of agriculture in this budget of 2023 2024 mm. to ensure that all of us go home for home. farming yes i have my 1000 acres i'm really i've imported two tractors mm. you know for real commercial work i'm going away in the field. Mm -hmm. But I would want government to give us a lot of opportunities through fiscal measures that allow the farmers who are engaged at a commercial level or even at a substances level to to motivate everybody. Especially because agriculture production. is our huge. Because that is what is yes. going to help us with this inflation that mm. is still staggering. Because once food is at, at average good price for everybody, then then life is sweet. I hear you. Because mm. we do everything for, for life. And life means you must facilitate everybody by feeding. Mm. So we, we should not be importing onions from Kenya. True. Irish potatoes, we used to think it True. comes from Kavale. It now comes, comes from, from Kenya. Kenya you know? mm. But Uganda is more fertile than Kenya. So what is going on? The eggs. Why should we import eggs from Kenya? Are there no hens in Uganda? In Uganda? So... So the debate in parliament should be put at a strategic level. These other ones are just administrative. Yeah. The number of guns. We want strategic thinking for the future of Uganda, for our children of the future. Mm. How do we debate in a manner that brings outcome that everybody feels that there is the legislature? Yes. Now for me, that traction has not yet been felt. When shall we have it? I hear you. Yeah. So so I will be very, very uh, observant this year mm. in terms of monitoring the, uh, on my own. True. Parliamentary Watch, mm. I will do that thing. But on my own, I, I am very interested to monitor and even be valuation mm. at the end of the day. Because legislation, how many bills are pending from government which yes. have not been brought? Mm -hmm. There are so many. How about other amendments that need to be done? The Constitutional Review Commission, yes. it is sitting with its tail. I we want to wait it. until the election is at the corner. We say and we are going we for Constitutional to Review. So, so at a strategic level, there are many things to engage in. Mm. We do not uh, stop business of parliament, but we, we can afford to comment mm. uh, with advisory notes uh, to mean that there are things Ugandans are looking at very importantly. Uh, than the Namuganza issue. Yes. Yeah, we shall always deal with Namuganza. Once we have dealt with the bigger, the bigger issues, issues yes, yes, that can be sorted mm. out. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, and maybe General Sec, there on that point, mm. part of the things that Parliament was able to do last year was give money to independent investors. And one such investor was for the Luhoa Hospital. And there was also money spent on Munyonyo, a trio, and the seemingly, you know, relative 
coffee argument that almost went through but was retracted because questions were being asked. But when you look at all this money that has been given to private investors for work that we cannot necessarily account for, how do we manage or how do we hold parliament accountable to monies that have been released in regards and on behalf of Ugandans to investors that we, we, we can't even put to hand the work that they've been doing for us as a country. Because when you pass Luboa, it is still, you, you can't tell, you know, what the future looks like when it comes to that, that area around Luboa. So how do we, you know, have more accountability and checks and balances when it comes to that, that kind of business in parliament, but also the finances that are released within the system from parliament? It's um, an uphill task to, 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 to hold this parliament to account, um, especially in a commercialized political environment. Mm. Because you, in the ideal way, you would expect the population mm. to hold parliament to account. Mm. Uh, but now there is a challenge that um, the whole thing has been put, uh, commercialized that um, even um, in projects like you're mentioning, mm. Lugowa, Munyonyo, Loko, yeah. Munga, mm. how Loko was also given those this 207 billion mm. Ugandan shillings. The intention behind, I mean, uh, all these all these projects may not necessarily be that to to, to, to ensure that. Uh, the, the, the person at the grassroots gets that benefits, service or true. benefits from mm. the project. But the people who are working on that project or who are working on, 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 on that um, particular uh, particular query in parliament mm. maybe have their self, I mean, are pushing their selfish ends. So I, I, I think um, we, we need to... Uh, in this year, 2022, we need to do a, a self 23 mm -hmm. a self reflection on, on on what we do, what uh, the, the the bills we are uh, we are passing, mm -hmm. the business that is on the full parliament. Mm -hmm. Is it in, in the interest of of, the, of that common man? Mm -hmm. you, you 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 talked about the the Namuganza censure, and uh, honourable was also um, asking, is it really what we need at this as as parliament yeah. opens yeah. Uh, yeah. this? This new new session, and um, um, you, you you definitely, if you go out to ask a common man in, in, in my uh, home district, is saying, you know, they will tell you that is not our that, that shouldn't be priority. Mm. How mm. does he or she benefit from Namugansa being shut? Mm. It should uh, be um, those areas that directly benefit the common man. For instance, me, I'm looking at. When we we'll start seeing, um, like the national insurance bill, the national health insurance mm. bill, mm. being reintroduced again, yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and, and, and being yeah. pushed yeah. so that even my grandmother who is down in the village can walk into a health center mm. Mm. and get the best services mm. she needs. Mm. Um, those that benefit us, the, the, the whole of us, not those persons. Because if you critically look at this motion for censure. You even see vendetta, personal vendetta. You see people pushing um, to, to 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 exert their influence on others. So you see bad intentions. Yeah. When actually Parliament should be like Honourable said, mm -hmm. looking at how they can um, uh, they can balance mm -hmm. uh, the pressures in the economy. Mm -hmm. Look at how commodity prices can come down so mm -hmm. that the common man can also afford mm -hmm. basics in life. Mm -hmm. Um, the fuel prices are mm. still very high, mm. but we're still talking about censuring a minister. And in any way, if we censure a minister, how, what about the, 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 the land that was given away? Will it be returned? Mm -hmm. Is it and then an end in itself? Is it a solution, the final solution to, to correct the wrong? Or possibly there should be another, yeah. um, mm. another effort that mm. must be put in. Mm. So we seem to be looking at trivial issues or maybe to, to satisfy our egos, but instead of looking at those critical matters that, that affect the common man. And I love what Honorable Kumaket said, perhaps mm. there is need for a forensic check mm. when it mm. comes to the Naguru land mm. saga. Mm. 
And maybe we are looking at the first value of it because mm -hmm. we are all missing the nitty gritty. It mm -hmm. may never really be about Honorable Namgaza, but that there was land that was eaten that we need to have a, a deep investigation around. Mm -hmm. and, and, and on that note, um, Kosasa did a report on the aviation mm -hmm. you know, company in Uganda. And you know, there was a lot of ugly moments in, in that investigation and that, and that, and that you know, period and process where we are trying to get to the nitty gritty of what is happening at the Uganda Airlines. And while we didn't get a resolution from parliament on how to go ahead, as I know Kosase finished their report and delivered it. But in that regard, for one reason, I have noted that a lot of the parliamentary committees really do a hard work and a good work in making sure that they investigate issues and bring their reports to parliament. But how, and you've been in the house, so you may know what happens. How do we, you know, retract, you know, resolutions and recommendations from these reports to be able to serve, you know, the Ugandans? I read the health report from, 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 from the health committee in parliament, and it was beautifully done. And they had, you know, done checks and balances within, you know, different hospitals. And they, were, they, were, they had recommendations to this should be done this should be reinvestigated. Mm -hmm. The Auditor General should look into this. But beautiful as it is, they come to the full floor of Parliament and I don't know if there are actionable points that go in after that. Mm -hmm. What happens to the committee reports? And as we go into 2023, what do we imagine Parliament can do with a Kosase report on the aviation company of Uganda? Well, I, I, I think... The rules of procedure of parliament need still to be reviewed. For me, I find it is not strong enough to allow all processes to be accomplished. Mm. And it does not also give a lot of uh, strength to, to the leadership of the committee to really seriously and rigorously do their work. Mm. Uh, you look at many reports. There are reports in the seventh parliament, yeah. in the eighth parliament. I remember in the ninth parliament, the cartoon to, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. that report yes. of his. Yes. yes. Mm. Very serious yes. reports. And at the end of the day, it becomes breaking news, headlines. After one month. It's quiet. You know, and Ugandans are used to breaking news. So everything mm. new is, is what mm. is important. When it mm. goes, that is it. Mm. So how do we design a strategy that allows what is important for the country? to be followed to its logical conclusion. There are so many good reports of committees inside that house. Mm. Yes. If you check on the answers and with the work the Parliamentary Watch has been mm. doing, if you do a whole summary of them, then you find that we have a big governance challenge. Yes. In the legislature, in the executive, even in the judiciary. Mm. So for Parliament, as you say, like this one, which is still hot. I think the current rules allow uh, the chair mm. of the committee can can present under rules of procedure what they call a briefing to parliament. Oh, yeah. It's allowed. You mm. don't need to wait for, for anybody. Mm. And you cannot be stopped. You only need to inform the speaker that I will be presenting a briefing to parliament mm. on the situations regarding this. There are so many ways, and uh, so you need to have a parliamentary weight yeah. to, to see how you, but if you are to formally wait mm. that the chair will be called, will be put in order paper, mm. and will present the report, I don't know whether it will happen. So, so those rules of procedures are there, but the members are not exhausting the rules. Mm. And uh, for me, the Uganda Airlines and, uh, and all these other things, well, these are just uh, high singing in the cake. Mm. There are other deeper things that we need to yeah, be dealing you. with mm. that are more than that. Mm. And uh, Kusase, as, as I heard about even some of the members that uh, were part of those processes, you, you know, you hear corridor talks about yeah, so and yeah, so was yeah. called and, you know, had to be facilitated. and had to, So there are so many things that are there which until when we listen and, and hear formally the report of Kosase. So we don't know. 
is it the chair and the committee that are lazy to okay. make sure this is done? Or is it the presiding officers that are not putting these reports for, for, the purpose, in the, yeah. for debate? Mm. And if we are to debate, should we debate for only three minutes per person? Or people reaches and said, for me, I have evidence to, to share and I want to be given uh, 30 time. minutes. Look at the sale of Uganda uh, Commercial Bank. Mm. Jacob Bulanya was the chair of the legal and, uh, mm. and uh, parliamentary. Mm. He requested the speaker to talk. He spoke for two hours. Oh, wow. Mm. It was a debate mm. on why Uganda Commercial Bank should not be sold. Mm. But it took all this time that what Jacob said then has now come and said, by the way, we should have not what? Sold. We should have not sold. We should have not given UEB out. We should have not, you know, mm. UTL should have remained with it, the, the mobile telephony. Yeah. So, so for me, this Kosasa report and all other reports that are equally important should be given their best of time for debates. Mm. And, and that means that the presiding officers in parliament should, should uh, structure to get better outcomes, should structure and say that for this debate, we shall allow 20 members of parliament or 15 mm. Mm. based on their level of preparation yes. to engage in the debate. We shall be giving members 30 minutes. But not this one no, where you say, look. my voters should see me mm. on the screen. I hate it. That is not legislation. I hear For you. me, I was in parliament. I did not like this thing of just making sure. That they are unseen. You know, you, uh, point of order, point of information. Mm. This is not primary level debate. Mm. This is national debate. Where if you are to give a point of information, let it be real information. Mm. But others just do it because... The camera should see me in my constituency mm. in, uh, in Kuba Mutue. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And this is what is letting us down. And for me, part of what should uh, the presiding officers should engage in is capacity building of the, of the legislature. And the quality of debate. Yes. Mm. So that you know that if there is a sitting today, I even would want to say, no, I'm not doing this work. I want to go and sit in the yes. gallery and watch. As we used to do mm. from Akari University, mm. we would walk and see those debates. So it is still a very big challenge. I thought Uganda from 1962, we have moved a great uh, deal. Six years now. Six and and I'm worried because we still do, you know, the, the politics of eyes and the nays. And so bills are passed without yeah, critical yeah. debate on them deep interrogation on yeah, them yeah, yeah. and so some are even brought back and yeah. still taken back yeah. and so in between there there is work to be done within yeah. the house yeah. itself for me i still i just now would want to speak on behalf of the late speaker because mm. no one will speak for him yes the late speaker said and that was his biggest he said when i was deputy speaker we never had opportunity we had agreed with the with Madam Kadaga, to have a full debate on the economy. And that debate should take three weeks or one month. Mm. And we sort out these economic issues. So when he came back as a speaker, I happened to go and see him. Mm. And unfortunately, that was the last time he sat in office. Mm. And I was the last visitor mm. in his office. And he walked out and never came back alive. He said, what I need in this parliament mm is one thing, the debate on the economy. Mm. I want us to debate the economy and sort out everything on the economy. Ministers of Finance should not play around with these issues that they are the only ones with the figures. Mm. So he wants a broad preparation which should take one month and everybody who will be speaking must Some have information. their information mm. fully researched and will, should be well delivered. And that is when Parliament will resolve and urge government yeah. to do what they shall have debated. So that has not taken place. Indeed. And, uh, I, and I remember one thing also he also said while, while he was, you know, presiding over a session was he needed immediately as he, he began his work as speaker, yeah. he needed conversation around the Uganda we want. That is the thing. And I remember that because in hindsight, 
I I wished he had enough time to have that conversation. Yeah. Mm. So it would be a banking point to remind members of parliament yeah. that is the Uganda you desired. Yeah. Yeah. Are you working towards yes. that Uganda? Yes, that is that is the challenge uh, and uh, what Baganda called Olubengo. Mm. Mm. Not mm. so? Mm. Mm. Uh, that the current leadership mm. of parliament should take. Yes. That how do we have the Uganda we want? How is this structured? Because if, in political science, you, you, you look at politics, economics, and social issues. Mm. Which one is more important? You see that the social aspect of oh, life yes. is more important than the yes, other two. Yes. So the other two, the politics must drive to meet the interests of the social oh, the welfare. Social. Mm. The economics is still a tool to ensure that the yes, social, social is welfare okay. is achieved. Yes. And it's all about human beings and our surroundings. Mm. The climate change issue yes, is one yes, of the priorities yes. that should, we should see in this parliament. This thing of saying, Nema is there, what is there? Eh, Nyakana, are you a frog? What, it should not arise. Mm. The climate change agenda should be one of the issues for this year. Yeah. We are just back from Egypt. It's hot outside. Yes. Mm. Now let people feel it. Mm. I, just, I just pray that it increases. This morning, BBC said, in their reporting, mm. that we are going to witness oh, wow. an increase of above 1.5 degrees centigrade That's on lot. the global temperature. That's a lot. Mm. Now, that was what was projected. Mm. But now the scientists are saying it is going to 2.5 degrees. So by the end of this century, mm. the glaciers of, of, of the north will go. We will have melted. Mm. We shall have gone. The Arctic Circle down there shall have melted. Then the sea, the, the, the sea levels will rise. If they rise, that means that we are going to have challenges yeah, of floods all over. Mm. If we, like countries like Netherlands may go away forever. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there are many things coming. Okay. And why are we not engaging? I even I presented concept note to Meme. I said to Meme, let's do some business. Mm. On, on what they call modeling, community, uh, community resilience and climate change model mm -hmm. in your public relation work. You know, where we, you, you now put money for seedlings, for schools all over the country. Mm -hmm. Every school must have some five acres, ten acres to grow. Yes. You know, go to Gombolola headquarters, go to where... So we plant enough trees. Yeah, so we are, we are still discussing with the member. But I think they have been also hard hit with the with the current uh, shock of the, the news that they should live yes. in two years. Yes. So they are grappling with mm. it. I am also mm. feeling a, a little hesitant to go and, uh, mm. you know, begin <clears throat> talking business when they are mourning. Yes, uh, I hear you. There are challenges. But for me, the climate change agenda for Uganda 2023 must not be taken lightly. It should be fun. Among sometimes. other things, because these economies we are talking about, if we do not handle the climate thing well, yeah. We are finished. Look at the, the swamps in Kampala. Mm. They have all gone. Mm. And the flooding has increased. Yes. And it will increase. For me, it will be very good. No one should say people died. There is incidents here. No. Nature said you should not live there. And then you Why do you go there? there? So nature should chase away everybody from all those places. For me, I will be very happy. You cannot stay in a swamp. You are not reptiles. Mm. You are not amphibians. <laughs> you are not a frog. Yeah, as Otafira uh, said, Nyakana, are you a frog? <laughs> Why are you here? So. Let me bring you in, General Secretary. And on that, because it's it's very important to realize, you know, what then can we do with the twenty with the eleventh Parliament yeah. in this in this session that has begun. But most also importantly, what business can they bring forward that mm. is important in addressing the economic challenges, in dealing with the shocks? Because people are, are, have really felt the shocks. I noted this Christmas, few people traveled. Mm. Because while you mm. imagine people have traveled, you would wake up to traffic. Mm. People are going to work. And so it almost felt like at some point citizens were on their own. So how do we bank on not just passing, you know, a fair budget, but also putting back the interests of the Ugandan on the order papers, on the budgets, on the business within the 11th parliament. And I think that will be our winding down conversation. And then mm. also bring you in, Honorable Komakech, mm. on the way forward on where we could go in the future. Yeah. General Secretary. 
Yeah, I, I, I liked the uh, submissions from <coughs> Honorable Komakech, uh, especially on our focus on the business in Parliament. And um, um, he, he only missed one thing, because he proposed um, giving members of Parliament much more time to expound on, on, on issues mm. that are critical uh, to, 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 to the... Um, to the, to, the, to the citizens, yeah. but he didn't talk about the need to mm. to, 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 to to resize the, 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 that parliament to scale down. And someone the, said we should have fifty yeah, fifty. Yeah, to scale down one, one that size each, of this parliament. Mm. Um, General Tafile uh, talked about it, mm. and he was attacked left and right. But I think that's the discussion we, we should also be talking about, mm. because five hundred and twenty nine members of parliament. And they are all fighting for space in that small house. Good mm. enough, we are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they will be soon shifting to the bigger new chamber. Mm. But again, you can't expect time also to be compressed. Mm. The time will remain the same, mm. and they will all, they will all be uh, allowed to, to speak for three, three minutes. minutes. Mm. So whatever you do, if we do not cut on that size of parliament, then we will be doing nothing. Mm. We need now to hear um, uh, that discussion come on the floor and then uh, give any the, the, the the, the attention it deserves. Don't you think the numbers mm. are also political? Mm. Yes, that is what I, I was also going to talk about. That um, also um, the imposition of the executive on, on, on parliament. Parliament takes decisions, like you would say, it, makes mm. resolutions mm. And, 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 and committees make reports, good reports. What happens? Parliament surrendered its powers to the executive. Mm. You know it. Mm. Whatever the executive wants in that parliament, it goes and it, and it happens. It, 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 it is what is brought to the business of mm. parliament. Mm. So how can now that parliament, ask, I mean, uh, be assertive and say we are a separate, um, in Entity. the three arms of government, mm. we also have to, we deserve some independence as, mm. as, 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 as uh, that separate, in that principle of separation of powers. Mm. So when can we see the executive, um, I mean, respect the decisions of parliament. We've been talking about the the the, the airline, the report, mm. the consistent report on, mm. on, 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 on the Uganda Airlines. Why is it not being uh, um, brought to the to the order paper? It is partly, I would think, because the contents of that report leak. Mm. What is in the in the leaked report? is that the uh, officials at uh, Uganda should be punished. Others, it also highlighted that indeed others um, were um, given jobs when they did merit mm -hmm. to be in those positions. So if, if those were decisions of the president, the head of the executive, to appoint those people, mm -hmm. and now the report is saying they should be fired, they, should be, they shouldn't be in office, mm -hmm. then probably we would think in this context where you have the executive, with much powers yeah. on parliament, mm. then probably the report will not see the light of the day mm. on, on, on that work because it possibly puts pressure on the executive mm. to act, mm. which we know that the executive, the head of the executive, doesn't want to be. He's a person who doesn't want to be to be told on what to do. He doesn't take directives from anyone. So I think it is time parliament. Um, um, uh, um, understands its powers. Because in the constitution, that parliament has a lot of powers, even mm. to censure the president. It has powers to censure the president. But they willingly or unwillingly surrender those powers to the executive. And that is why we will always and always see those uh, things, those matters that we think are critical to the common man mm. being either shelved or not given attention until the executive decides so. Mm -hmm. So we can, as, as much as we are talking about these other matters that we need Parliament to do this, to do this, to do, to do until Parliament knows its powers and um, and, and puts those powers into practice mm -hmm. and fend off 
the, 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 imposi- the, 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 the intrusion from the safety. Mm-hmm. Possibly that's when things can start. And I want to believe there are a few good men in that house mm-hmm. that still want to work for the people of Uganda. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's do way forward. Where do we go from here? I'll begin with you, Honorable Kumakech. Mm-hmm. In, in regards to the 11th parliament, mm-hmm. we've come in the middle of their term. Mm-hmm. This will be their third year. Yeah. And we'll have two more years to go. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact, a lot of campaigning has begun. Without it shouldn't, but it has. I mean, out there in the field, making sure they will make it to the next house. So, way forward for 2023 for the 11th house as they begin their first, their third session today of their second of the second sitting of the mm. second sitting. What do we hope to have in this, you know, in this coming term or in this coming session? Oh, well, it's, it's, a, it's mm. just a tall order. I cannot even guess. Mm. You know, he, as you say, wishes were horses. Beggars were Beggars right. Were right. Yes. So, me, I, in my own thinking, there, there are important bills that need to come out. Yeah. Uh, from this 11th parliament. Mm. And this important bill, like, like the bills I left in parliament, I, I expected these bills to be Would helping to be now. By now. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't see journalists being disturbed. Yes, I wouldn't yes. see different organizations. You know, the Human Rights Protection Defenders Bill. Yes, I stood the minimum for that wage bill. bill. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and even uh, the committee even wrote a report. Mm. And we were supposed to pass it. It's All of a sudden, uh, the, the, the clerk disappeared. That report. Oh, wow. I said, one day, if I have some power, I will invoke those powers to some mm. of our civil mm. servants. Mm. Only to be told, no, it is now late. So, so oh. we we were technically put off, not to pass that mm. bill. Mm. The national legal aid bill. It is yeah. on the floor of parliament. Mm. We need our local people to, to be, be able to empowered justice. legally, to be represented legally, mm. to have access to justice. And with the legal areas. aid is struggling right now. Yeah. Mm. So, European Union had even, uh, you know, in their working thing with the with the jailers. Mm. To, uh, 67 million euros was being availed for, for legal if aid. that thing would be passed. Wow. Now, for me, those are the energies I would want to put for the local people, the, the voters, yes. the citizens. They are out there. Now they are waiting for the next round of visitors in yes. the constituency. Now, if you start evaluating, have we reached a level where we should even start campaigning? Mm-hmm. If we are doing well, or in serious work, mm-hmm. It is monitoring in progress. Mm. You cannot evaluate anything, but you find people are running up and down yes. as if election is going to be tomorrow. At the level of presidents, mm. from up top to down. To down, yes, yes, I've seen. You know, so I find it very difficult at present to make a very absolute statement mm. on 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 what the the priorities of parliament should be. But I believe the speaker of parliament. A young, young leader, mm. a good friend, a deputy. We served with them in opposition. Mm. You know, he was my report as young Democrats mm. in Makere University. Very good. They are all very energetic in their vision for this parliament. They should give us the direction. Yeah. Because that is what they held the Bible and they swore for. Mm. And I would be very happy to toss champagne with them mm. for, for, for taking a lead in a direction that brings uh, Ugandans at the center of yeah. every service. Mm. It should be a people-centered parliament, parliament mm. where we should not be complaining with stress and high blood pressure killing us for nothing. We should say, they have been elected, they are in charge, they will deliver. Now, there's a lot of fear about them because anybody who goes in leadership now, everybody has reservations. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm. when shall we remove this fear mm. Mm. from Ugandans? Mm. At a strategic level, the integration is coming. Congo is part of it's part of the, the, are we the, the utilizing East African it? region. Mm. Are we utilizing the integration? Congo is the best neighbor you have in the world. A neighbor which has gold, 
scattered all over. All the world, Diamonds are just shining in the mm. forest. Mm. Everything is there. God left everything. God was so tired after creating he the world. In Congo. He rested in Congo and went. <laughs> everything is there. And Congo instead, is our friend. Instead, we are fighting. <laughs> we are struggling with the M what M what M23. You know, we have mm. sent forces there. ADF is inside. You don't know who is there. Mm. So I don't know. I think the president of the Uganda should take a bold step to ensure that the issue of DR Congo is sorted out as soon as possible. For Uganda to take advantage in terms of the business acumen to trade with the Congo mm. as a partner in the integration. While we do that, we should also be seeing that the integration should also help Ugandans to sell all over. I don't see Ugandans even learning Kiswahili. And in future, we are going to have economies they, they, that are Kiswahili it's going driven to now in become language. Compulsory. But when you speak Swahili, someone, someone thinks you're a muyai. You're a thief. You know? So, so the integration agenda should be at our center as well. Mm. And Parliament should drive that process. I think they're going to start teaching it as a compulsory yeah. thing. We should even get back to East African Examination Boards in future. Yes. Yeah, common currency. We need to see them all working. And we are making sure that we, Uganda hosts the, the monetary center mm. of the East African shillings. So these are strategic things that Parliament itself here should also be... Project Kenya is ahead through, of us in this. Yes. We should not wait for them. You know, mm -hmm. as we bring more on board, like Somalia is uh, hanging, you know, Ethiopia wants to join, even come with their power supply. They say they can supply the whole of East Africa mm -hmm. and we switch off all our own falls and Karuman mm -hmm. because they have the capacity mm -hmm. to supply half of Africa. Mm -hmm. So, so for me, I think it is still very early. I know in the first quarter, we shall have known where the direction of 2023 is, is going yes. and we shall be having fair comments on, on what it takes for the direction of the country mm -hmm. but as of now it is just happy new year yes but it is happy new year with resolutions that should have outcomes not this personal resolution that ah, this year now i will not drink i will not drink. government should come and give us the proper direction of the yes. economy. Then everything else will work. And, and, and I would imagine that at the beginning of such a year, in as much as we have a State of Nation address yeah. in June, yeah. that we would have a key State of Nation address in, in just posturing ourselves and making sure yeah. we are centered for the year yeah. from our head of yeah. state. Yeah. But but you said something that I wanted to tap into before we, we close mm. on you know, the IALA, the East African Legislative Assembly yeah. and the Parliament of Uganda, because we have representation there. How do we, you know, find resolutions like you have noted mm. that help the region, the East African region and integration propel forward, mm. come from within our parliament mm. and be taken up from within this house into the East African Legislative mm. Assembly so that our representatives can then be the voice because I've heard them speak about oil and, you know, the, the, the conversation from the European Union. Mm. But I don't know if there are matters within the East African region like DRC Congo that have come out from our parliament into the East African Legislative Assembly. Mm. No, I th I, the East African Legislative Assembly is, well, the community. I, I think there is need of the, the state parties. We even need to review the treaty. There are a lot of emerging things that were because of Uganda, Kenya, yeah, Tanzania. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of other emerging things coming mm -hmm. that needs the treaty to be reviewed. Yeah. Do, do we have people doing that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you, we always send people there. Yes, we vote for them. Uh, should we be voting from parliament? We, we may need in future to even broaden it out. Yes. To have regional representation mm -hmm. straight. Mm -hmm. You go and campaign in the north, in the west, and where you, you go. go. Mm. To represent mm. the, the real uh, the real regions assembly. of yeah yeah mm. so those are matters that we need to to look at but for me at present uh, I'm happy that the Minister of uh, East African Affairs has started improving she has done yeah, a good and, job and, and we need to congratulate Kadaga yes, she has done, she has great done work a good job in this short time yeah. she has been in that office and she has really strengthened the position she of has. Uganda I remember by 
when she even uh, had to stop certain recruitment because Ugandans were not yes. uh, part of the whole process mm. until Ugandans were included. That was very patriotic. Mm. But the most important thing now we need to do to leverage uh, and, and, and get institutional relations in working is how do we relate with the Secretariat of, of, of East African Community? Mm. How do we relate with the East African Court of Justice? Mm. How do we relate with the, with, the, with the East African Legislative Assembly? For me, I see a big gap because our MPs who represent us there go. Yes. But I have been in that parliament. I never saw any single day where a formal report was, was given named. to the parliament of Uganda by all of them. We should allow the rules to say that these members should, should have opportunities to present mm. to the house the emerging issues from, from their region, from, from the regional assembly. Mm. So, so that means from the side of Uganda, we should create a secretariat in yes. parliament that has a full-time job on everything that Happens relates to, Yala. To, uh, to Yala. Mm. The executive, through means of East African Affairs, will as well be doing that. Now, if we can strengthen the two institutions, that is a serious stuff. It's missing. The only thing we have is that people are dressed so well and are sending up, in, you know, you know, we represent, and we represent. There are no reports and that, that report should be given to Parliament of Uganda, mm -hmm. and then if there are treaties that all decisions or policy issues, Parliament should ratify. Mm -hmm. I've not seen this happen. So, because okay. we should say that in the order paper today, we are dealing with the, the East African, African community, community issues. issues true. Yes. Parliament is going to ratify this mm -hmm. and this on this mm -hmm. and this and this on this. Mm -hmm. But everything else you hear through rumors. You only read the East African... A newspaper. A newspaper. Yeah. So there's a lot of room to improve mm. our integration process by bringing information closer to all decision-making yeah, organs. Yeah. And that is what is required. It's not a showbiz yeah, that I am there, I'm here. I don't know. Mm. Your work should be seen, not because you say it, but, but because, because people see the it. outcome. Yes. Now for me, that is what would gain traction, and we know that everybody is doing their their yeah, responsibility. Well. Mr. Tonsim, in, in, in two minutes as we close, what do you project for the 11th Parliament in this season that we began? Yeah, the, the 11th Parliament, um, like Honorable said, it's, it may be too early to, to, to know how uh, it, will, it, will, it will perform, but you, you expect that after these close to two years, mm. they have uh, somehow um, made themselves familiar with uh, the corridors of yeah. parliament. Mm. They know what mm. to do because the majority of them are new. Mm. They are start up. I mean, um, they, they are newcomers in, the, mm. in that house. Possibly we expect that they will improve, uh, but until until some bigger issues are handled, mm. until um, 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 politics mm. is not um, does not dominate matters of development mm. because we, we politicize everything mm. you were talking about people now thinking about how they can come back the next time mm. they are start campaigns other, mm. other, other campaigns have mm. already started mm. but the, what at the back of their mind they are only looking at it is politics now yeah. Mm. Yeah. instead now we should be looking up at, at what programs mm. i mean can help our people how can we uh, how can we participate or participate in those programs and help them get better mm -hmm. but every time a program comes up every time a decision is going to be made there is politics behind it yeah. you see politics mm -hmm. in every in everything mm -hmm. until we look at developmental issues mm -hmm. on one side mm -hmm. and treat Separate them differently them. Mm -hmm. and then bring little Politics. I mean, don't involve my politics in, in, in everything. Then that's what that's when things can get better. He 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 brought up the issue of, of the East African integration, a good good issue. Well, while he says uh, things, few things should be adjusted and and, and amended. Even mm. the treaty, he says it, it should be revised. Yes, mm. I, I may agree, but me, I think the, the, the gap is the gap is not so big mm. because the members of parliament is. ERA members are voted in our parliament. They, they are elected mm. here in our parliament. Mm. 
Even the Minister of East African Affairs, the Honorable Rabia Kadaga, mm. is a member of Parliament. Mm. So there is, there, there is a channel mm. where, where, where the issues uh, that we think should be discussed uh, or should connect our Parliament and their Parliament, the mm. channels are there. Mm. I think she is an ex official in that party. Yeah, yeah, she she yeah, sits she there. Is. Yeah. Mm. So, so, me, I think there is still room mm. maybe to, 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 to pull up our socks. And, mm. but, and again, what we should also um, understand is that uh, uh, the East African Legislative Assembly um, has the, the issues they handle may not be these issues that we we, we have in our parliament here or oh, we, we may need mm. yeah for them they are looking at those issues that mm. cut across the, the member mm. states mm. Like, like trade but i love what of mm. said when mm. he said there are issues within the the iliala mm. that we can ratify here mm. Home. Mm. and you know there is business that happens there mm. that we can have you know not just a report but checks on mm. to understand where uganda fits in the regional conversation mm. as regards to what they've you know committed to the things that have happened in that space mm. So I am, so as much as a lot of the business happening at Iyala mm. may not you know directly affect the Parliament of Uganda, it's important to also note there are things that happen there that preview to us mm. make better sense for us if we understand them, mm. or if we have input to them, or if we have reports mm. to them. Just just to, just a yes, footnote. Yeah. You see, the the issue I was reading here is. Look, in many meetings we do at the regional level, mm. Ugandans do not go with well-informed positions. Exactly. They don't. Mm. And, and that is why I needed to say, we needed a secretariat here that robustly is equipped with the technical mm. expertise mm. Mm. that monitors all the daily things that take place mm. there. Mm. Yeah, so but that but it makes us take very well-informed decisions. By the time you are tossing a champagne and everything, it is done. Yes. But you find that decisions are tilted. Kenya has overtaken away. But, but you see, Honorable, that's what I talked Tanzania about. Tanzania has overtaken yes. away. Mm. Positions come, Uganda is having only mm. 0 0.001. Mm. You know? Mm. And how did it come about? And they are brought they about no it. Information. You go right now, you find that Ugandans, in terms of ratio, they are mm. negligible. Mm. Because we do not have a permanent concern on what takes place there. Kenya is number okay. one. Oh, oh, honorable, you, you, you know what I talked about, yeah. the issue of politics. Mm. You know very well that it is we members of parliament from Uganda who are fighting in that assembly to eject Honorable Margaret Ziwa. Mm. We, we take our politics even, even, the, even to that level. Region. You oh, get wow. it? Mm. So we, 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 we look more at politics than how we should be looking at other, 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 other salient mm -hmm. issues. Those Kenyans we're talking about, for them, when they go there, they're looking at how they can expand their, their, their participation in the, in the East African market, in mm -hmm. the regional market. For us, we're exporting politics to what? To, 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 the, to, the, to that level. And, and, and I hear yeah. you, and mm -hmm. maybe just to wind this conversation mm -hmm. on politicians taking the politics mm. out of <laughs> we, we, we interrogate that yeah. deeper mm. and I, I don't want us to take long because the future is is yet blurry for us because it's day one mm. for the 11th parliament mm. one thing but uh, but i'm hoping one as thing. we as we close mm. mrs mm. mr chosime mm. because the time is cut out the mm. producer is looking at me but <laughs> So, but I am hoping that yeah. we'll have this conversation yeah. next week on Friday when we return yeah. Yeah. to interrogate, you know, what has changed in a week's time yeah. of their work. Because today's day one. There is little mm. we can hold them on to mm. other than project into the future. Mm. But thank you for joining us today. I have been your host, Trisha Gloria Navae. I'll find you again here too. Thank you for joining us. Mm.